Okay, hi there. Welcome to our Revision Blast looking at macroeconomics. So what I've done is I've put together 10 multiple choice questions for you on macroeconomics. Have a go at uh, these questions. Question number one, an economy is currently in equilibrium at point X. Government spending is increased on retraining programs for those out of work, and this raises the productivity of the trainees. All other areas of government spending are unchanged. And the question is, which point A, B, C or D shows the new equilibrium in the economy? Now, for each of these questions, as always, just press the pause button, have a go yourself, write the answer down, and then let's check our answers together. So question one, spending on retraining. Well, retraining, of course, is a way of reskilling the labour force, particularly those people who've been out of work, addressing structural unemployment. So you'd expect the aggregate supply curve to shift outwards because of higher productivity. But of course, government spending has gone up and its uh, aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So there's an outward shift in both aggregate demand and supply leading to the answer, which is C. Uh, keep in mind that different examples have different versions of the long and aggregate supply curve, the neoclassical version and the Keynesian version. Now check to see which version is uh, you expected to use, but most boards will accept both. Just choose the one you're most comfortable with. Here's question two. The diagram shows two aggregate demand curves and the short run aggregate supply curve. Other things being equal, or ceteris paribus, which one of the following is the most likely cause of the movement of the economy from equilibrium Y1 to equilibrium Y2? Take a moment, please, to press the pause button and have a go at question two. Now, AD shifted out to the right, so we're looking for one of the options which would increase aggregate demand. D is an increase in aggregate supply, uh, B and C would actually reduce demand in the short term. So the answer is A. And the reason is, of course, that it's C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Minus M. So if imports fall, then you're taking away a smaller level of import demand, which has the effect of increasing aggregate demand. The government, in question three, decides to raise the rate of value-added tax from 20% to 25%. What does this suggest is the government's main macroeconomic objective? Have a go, please, at question number three. So here we are. We've had the government increasing their VAT rate from 20% to 25%. Uh, what do you think the main macro objective seems to be? Well, it looks as if it's a revenue increasing measure designed to reduce the budget deficit. VAT for some households, depends on their spending patterns, can be seen as a regressive tax. So it actually makes the in income distribution more unequal. VAT going up would reduce demand and therefore cause higher unemployment. And of course, temporarily at least, it would increase prices of goods and services. So it would increase inflation. Question four. During a year, a country's national income in money terms increased by 7%. Prices increased by 4% and the total population increased by 1%. And the question is, what was the approximate change in real income per head? Have a go, please, at question number four. So real income per head is uh, real, means adjusted for prices, and uh, per head, of course, adjusted for population change. So 7% money increase in GDP, of course, take away 4% inflation, that means we're plus three, and take away 1% population growth. So the approximate change in real income per head is plus 2%. The economy grew more in money terms than population and inflation. So in real per capita terms, income was going up. Here's our fifth question. The diagram below shows two production possibility frontiers for an economy. Uh, which one of the following movements represents an economy that has experienced short run, but not long run economic growth? Take a moment, please, to have a go at question five. Now, short run growth uh, involves changes in the degree of ca capacity utilisation, the utilisation of our land, our labour, our capital. 
And the correct answer here is C, from B to C. You see we're moving from well within the PPF 1B to a point C which lies on the PPF. That is short run growth. The shift from C to D, for example, option D, is long run growth in the economy. A to B represents a recession and A to C represents a movement along a PPF curve. Uh, and any point, of course, on the PPF means you're using all available resources uh, efficiently. Key exam tip, of course, long run growth the, to an economist growth is essentially a long term concept is shown by an outward shift of the PPF. We're halfway through. How are we doing? How are you getting on with our 10 macro multiple choice questions? Well, here's question six. The table shows the consumer price index rate of inflation in the United States from 2006 through to 2013. And the question is, what can be concluded from the data about that period? Have a go, please, at question six. So you have here the percentage change in consumer prices. The correct answer here is D. There were eight years of rising living costs. 0.1%, uh, well, it's pretty close to constant prices, zero inflation, but it's still positive. There were three years of deflation. No, there were no years of deflation. Deflation, of course, was when the price level goes down. There were only four years of inflation. No, no all the years we had positive inflation indicating an increase from year to year in the consumer price index or the average cost of living. Good exam tip. People often confuse a fall in inflation with falling prices. A drop in the rate of inflation from 3% to 1% does not mean that prices are going down. Disinflation, which is what that is, means that prices are rising less quickly. Question seven. Uh, this is a good question. I like this one. The diagram below shows the initial short run and long and aggregate supply curves for an economy. SRS2 and LRS2 are the new positions. The most likely combination of causes of the shifts of those two curves are what? What do we think? Have a go. Press the pause button, please. And have a go at question number seven. So in question seven, there's been an outward shift in both short run aggregate supply and long run aggregate supply. So the key here is to match those two shifts up with the options available. And the answer is B, a fall in many wages, which would cause a fall in the sort of wage cost of production, shifting aggregate supply curve out in the short run, and a rise in immigration. Immigration increases the active labour supply and increases a country's productive potential. Question eight. Which one of the following best describes, most accurately describes, the action of the accelerator theory of investment? Have a go, please, at question number eight. So which one of these best describes the accelerator? Well, the accelerator is the idea that planned business investment, business investment in new factories, new machinery, new computer hardware, new, new tools and equipment, etc., Planned investment is influenced strongly by how quickly the economy is growing, by the rate of growth of demand. So if you take, for example, broadband, increased demand for 5G is causing broadband telecoms firms to increase their investment in, in their capacity to be able to meet demand. Uh, electric car manufacturers are ramping up their investment in order to meet growing demand for e-vehicles, etc. The best definition is B. Firms invest in capital equipment due to an increase in the actual rate of growth. Investment is driven by the actual growth of the economy. Now, there are plausible answers. In fact, all of the other answers are plausible. Indeed, they're correct. Okay. Uh, but the accelerator is precisely about the rate of growth of demand or GDP. Two to go. Uh, maybe you're doing pretty well. Can you get the last two questions correct? Which of the following is the most likely explanation of what is shown in the diagram? It says above, but of course it's below. So what's the most likely explanation of what's shown in the diagram? Aggregate demand has shifted from 81 to 82. What is the best explanation for that? Have a go, please. Press that pause button for question nine. So 80 shifted to the left, an inward shift of aggregate demand we're looking for the best option there and it looks as if the answer probably would
be B, I think. Higher taxes. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, an increase in the basic rate of income tax from 20% to, let's say, 22% would reduce households' real disposable incomes, and therefore that would have a direct effect on consumer spending. One to go in our 10-question revision blast. The diagram below shows an economic cycle. It certainly does. And the trend level of real GDP. Which point represents the economy producing at its normal potential level of real national output? What do we think for question number 10? Have a go, please. Press the pause button. So this question is about the something called the output gap, and it's the gap between where the economy is in terms of the actual level of national output, adjusted for inflation, and where the potential level of output is. And that's shown by the straight trend growth, which is essentially driven by the increase in aggregate supply. And the answer here is point X. At that point, actual GDP equals potential. There's neither a negative output gap to the left or a positive output gap to the right of X. That is the point. And the output gap measures the difference between a country's actual GDP and their potential GDP. And the output gap is an important measure, an important indicator of just how much spare capacity uh, a country has at different stages of the economic or the business cycle. Well, if you got to the end, many congratulations. Thank you for joining in this 10-question quiz on macroeconomics. Hopefully this was a useful exercise. Uh, take care, everybody. Stay safe. And see you again sometime soon.